Hi, Joshua here from trextrailers.ca and today I'm going to go through basically a walk around of the trailer itself. We're also going to do a walk around of the crate or the shipping crate that you're going to receive it in uh, just so you guys are familiar with what it's going to look like and the features of the trailer itself. If we want to go over here and have a look at the crate, so the trailer itself comes skidded in a metal crate that's clad in this cardboard cladding. The dimensions if you're going to be picking it up at a depot or we're going to be shipping it to your door are about 84 inches by 36 inches at a total width of about 47 inches and this crate here with the skid is going to weigh in around 700 pounds once you get this to your door you're going to be able to assemble the trailer itself and the trailer is going to look like this once it's been all put together I'm going to start here at the tongue and we'll work our way back through the features of the trailer and uh, go through things as methodically as I can. So at the start here, and this is where you're going to attach it to your machine, uh, be it a four-wheeler, a tractor, a uh, garden utility vehicle, a U, uh, RTV or UTV, uh, we've got a one and seven eighths ball hook up here. We also have a rotatable hitch. So if the trailer is going over uh, hills, bumps, it's not going to torque or twist on your machine and vice versa. If your machine's going over rough terrain, it's not going to affect the trailer or the load. This has got a Zerk fitting in here and this is greasable for maintenance. We've got a quick detach here where you just click it up and it pops off the machine. We go here to a tongue jack. So we've got a greasable tongue jack, heavy load, uh, works on you know, four-wheelers right through to small tractors, utility tractors, and RTVs. Uh, the next feature here, and, and this is movable, the next feature here is going to be the, the winch and uh, boom assembly, as well as the logging cage. And you can see down in here that this piece slides over the main frame, and, and it's adjustable. So this allows you to adjust uh, how long material you're going to be able to put in this uh, for logs. It also lets you set it up to balance your tongue weight uh, and, and set up the winch so it works best for your application. If you've got a tractor and you need it moved back so you're not interfering, uh, you can adjust it out of the way. From here we move up and we've got this uh, winch and boom assembly. So this here is a 2,500 pound uh, hand winch. It's two speed, so you can set it up on a high speed or a low speed. The cable runs through here up over the top of the boom and then down and we've got it uh, latched into the bucket right now and that's going to allow us to dump uh, this dump bucket. The other features we have here, take a bit of slack off of here, we can rotate the boom and I'll show you why that's, that's effective once we get the bed off the trailer. So that effectively lets you rotate it over to the side, lift the load up and then load it back in. So if I take all the slack, or give myself enough slack here, I can actually rotate this off to the side. And you'll see my hang point is off center. Now, with this in mind, we have to watch out that we don't tip the trailer while we're winching something up. So if I had an object here you know, if I wanted to load a generator into here, if I wanted to load uh, rock or logs for firewood, um, I can set this outrigger. So we use these outriggers to basically stabilize the trailer while you're winching off center so that you don't flip this trailer over or cause it to tip. These outriggers again are adjustable. And then the vertical will sit down and adjust to whatever you need it to do based on the terrain you're on. So if, you know, if you're on a hillside, you can set up for that. Uh, left to right you want to put out the outrigger out for whatever you're winching so that you, you basically stop it from doing any kind of twist during travel these should be put all the way in out of the way so you don't get hung up on anything so this boom is rotatable uh, from left to right back and forth it's also adjustable in its angle now you're going to want a higher angle when you're dumping because you need to be able to pull the bucket up there but for other applications, you may find that a lower angle works better. And to set the angle, you basically just work your way along these chains. 
and you want to match uh, left and right. So if I got two clips left on this one, I come on this side and I set it up for two clips left on that side. And you'll see I've just changed the boom angle. It also puts the boom a little bit further out to this side. So if you are grabbing something a little bit further off the trail, uh, that'll work for you as well. Again, so with this boom lowered and extended out to this side, we're going to want to stop lifting it at 440 pounds. So, you know, you can lift heavy objects, you can lift a generator, small logs, um, but 440 pounds on this, and you're going to want to make sure that you have the outriggers out at the time to make sure that weight doesn't uh, cause your trailer to tip over. With this straightened back out and locked into our, into our bed, we're going to raise this back up and I'm going to show you how this is a dump box as well. We want to match these chains so we get it straight in the center. And then with that cable kicked in, we've got the ability to dump this box. And uh, I'll show you soon that these both tailgate ends can be opened and removed. And with this locked in, we've got the ability to take this to 35 degrees and we have a dump capacity of about 650 pounds, 660 pounds. So uh, the boom itself can only lift 440 but it's able to dump 660 because half the load is balanced at the rear. Now as you can see from this dump angle, you're going to be able to dump anything you've got in here, firewood, sand, gravel, uh, rocks, but the tailgate's going to have to be out of your way. The tailgate itself is two clips and it slides out. Now these pins, one's longer than the other and that allows you to get one started and lined up before you have to line the other one up to make it nice and easy. Again, this can be left down or removed. All this bed is made out of galvanized steel. Uh, the whole subframe is powder coated in black. You'll see once we get this bed off of here, uh, the chassis, the frame is all very sturdy and is set up to carry about 2,000 pounds in total in the bed with the axle. So although you can only dump 660, you can carry up to 2,000 pounds in the trailer itself. So I'm going to lower this back down. I'm going to pull the pins out here at the back and then I'm going to show you how the bed and how easily the bed comes off. First I'll put the tailgate back here. Now we get asked a lot about the dimensions of this bed. So the length of the bed is 79 inches. The width of the bed is 42 inches. Now you'll see that the bed is, it's got a curve to it. So the bottom is only about 24 inches wide. The top up here is at 40 inches wide on the inside. The bed capacity is 1.1 yards. So if you're doing, you know, gravel or topsoil, uh, barn, you're not going to pass the weight uh, restriction at 2,000 pounds. It could hold up to a yard, uh, yard point one. So with the bed all the way down and the tailgate closed, now I can pull these pins and clips here. So uh, when this box is all the way down, there's no pressure on these pins and they slide out easily and they line up easily. So we take out the one. They got the second. And now this bed's actually free to move. So now that we've got the pins out, we're going to go around the trailer and we're going to lower the uh, logging extensions out of the way. Now these don't need to be in the trailer all the time. If you're not using it for logging, they just simply click out uh, to get out of your way. You'll see here we have a, a T handle that drops down inside. I've also got to un unhook this cable. I just click it onto my mesh. 
And now the bed itself. will come off the back. Now this bed weighs about 200 pounds. You can tilt it and slide it, but you definitely can't lift it on your own. Uh, if you want to use the winch, you can help uh, lift the one end and then it'll slide along on its own. Uh, you'll see the subframe here of this chassis. So we've got uh, box or square tubing. Everything's powder coated, uh, welded as one frame. These are the two bottoms, the, the large U-bolt that the cable attaches to inside the bed with the uh, cast iron points for the uh, rear dump. So get really strong pivot points and you'll see just the, the uh, strength single welded structure here. So now with all these logging pieces, I can flip all these up. And this is gonna allow me to stack more logs and pile more logs and firewood logs, uh, sawmill logs, whatever you're doing. These pieces are also entirely removable. And if you're just using the, the trailer itself, you don't need to have these on. You can just keep these stored in the shed and just use it as a trailer. When you're driving along, they, they do jingle a little bit. So if you don't need them, you can definitely remove them and set them aside till you do. Now with, with all these up and that bed off, we still have a capacity of 2000 pounds. So, uh, you know, firewood collection, logs, on my farm here we do a lot of cedar rails, picking up around the fence rows. Um, you can stack these in, pile them up, load it up. You can use the winch and boom to help you with that. So again, firewood logs, um, as long as they're not over 440 pounds, you can do with the boom. Inside here you're going to start to see the chassis uh, and what the trailer is actually made of. So the frame of the trailer itself. It basically uses a single strut down the whole middle and that's done out of square tubing at two and a half and then it fits inside a two and three quarter piece which is basically the main chassis here and then we have the tires on walking beams so these tires can rotate and pivot um, on a walking beam so you can basically rotate and pivot these over objects one tire at a time. So when you're going through the woods, you're going through the bush, uh, you know, those logs, rocks, these kind of things, your whole load and the whole trailer doesn't have to raise and lower. You know, this tire is going to go up over it, then the, then the corresponding, the rear, but at no point did your whole trailer have to go up and down. So when you're pulling the load like 2,000 pounds uh, and you're going through the bush, it's going to be much easier on your four-wheeler because every or, or your tractor because every time you go over something, you don't have to lift this whole load and, and bounce it around. So one tire at a time, it, it makes a lot less work for the trailer and a lot less work for what's pulling this trailer uh, th through the terrain. The tires themselves are 22 by 11 by 10. So it's, it's a standard size common on a lot of smaller ATVs, a lot of trailers. We've got a standard four bolt hub here, uh, packed bearings. We've got valve stem protectors so that if you're going through the bush and you've got twigs, rocks, you're not going to clip these valve stems off. These are tubeless tires. Uh, the main pivot point here for the walking beam is it's got a Zerk fitting in it. So that's a greasable fitting uh, that pivots through there. So you're going to want to keep those greased up that pivots and then you got the wheels that's greased uh, everything's zinc so we got zinc zinced in here galvanized here or powder coat so everything's protected from the elements uh, against corrosion the main beam and the main frame here is very adjustable and that's part of the versatility of this trailer so right now we can set it up for logging and i can take a log and we've got, you know, I could easily do 10 foot logs in this configuration. Now, I still have a little bit of room up front here to move this guard up to my trailer jack here. So I, I can add maybe another eight inches to the front, which doubles that, so it gives me another 16. So 11 footers. I also still have the ability to telescope the front tube or the main frame through this center chassis, and that can stretch it out. So you can do about 12 foot uh, material, 12 and a half foot material. Uh, again, you got to watch your rate, weight restriction, um, depending on what you're, you're hauling around, but uh, 12 foot material, if you put the butt ends to the front, you could probably do a little bit more because the weight will be balanced up to the, to the front. 
all these components are again adjustable. So this rear bracket here slides over the mainframe and it's adjustable in and out. Now this rear bracket has the pivot points for the bed. So generally it makes sense to have this rear one right at the back flush here. And that'll give you the most capacity. So with this rear piece, it makes the most sense to keep it at the back because it's got the pivots for the, for the box itself. Again, all the pivot points were, are cast, uh, welded in to give us a good strong pivot point here. And it's all done out of 3 8 to half an inch thick material. Um, all the, the plating and all the connections for all the walking beam, again, is done out of the same 3, three eighths uh, material. So it makes the most sense to keep this back part uh, all the way to the back because that's where the pivots are for the box itself. I'm going to show you just, just how easy it is to adjust this trailer in length, uh, either for logging or if you wanted to remove the boom and just have it as a dump or a, a utility trailer without the dump feature, uh, we can do that as well. So I'll take off all these logging racks. So I'm going to show you just how easy it is to adjust this trailer and the features on the trailer. So we have a locking nut on this bolt here. Now these are 18 millimeter. And then we have the, the bolts themselves. And these are basically clamping these parts in place on the main beam itself. So with these loosened off, we're going to be able to slide these components uh, forward and backwards and basically adjust the trailers. This one's just going to adjust the positioning of this part. Uh, so you can slide it all the way forward. And then if I loosen off these, I can actually slide the trailer together and that'll be the next step. So these basically clamp the, the, the center tube to the center chassis here by way of a pinch point. So as we loosen this off, we're going to be able to slide the two um, one within the other and adjust the overall length of the trailer. So now that we've got these bolts loosened off, we can basically shrink the chassis because this piece will go inside of this piece and uh, we can push it right until we bottom out on here or the boom. There's also, uh, we could pull these two apart, we could remove the whole boom assembly if we don't need it and just put the trailer bed on and make it just a short utility trailer. Now by removing the boom you're going to lose the dump feature because the boom gives you the ability to dump the box uh, but if you don't need the dump and you just want it shortened up for uh, even for storage then you can shrink it put everything in the bed itself and take it from there. Now I'm going to show you how to take this whole boom assembly off and break this trailer down to its simplest form, which is basically just the box itself on the chassis as short as it can possibly be, which is about eight feet compressed. And then depending on how long you like the tongue to be, so it doesn't interfere with the vehicle you're towing it with, you can stretch that out between, you know, eight feet up to 12 feet.